Joining me is world-renowned musician David Sanchez. He is also the original member of Bruce Springsteen E Street Band, and he's also a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. And he's here today. He's back on the show to talk about his latest album, Eyes Wide Open, and what is next for him. Hola, David. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> or uh, aloha, as we would aloha. say here. Aloha. In, in yeah, so aloha. how are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty well, uh, enjoying the weather down here. Um, it's, it's gorgeous. It's raining today, kind of pretty hard, but it's the beginning of uh, hurricane season, so we can expect that. But uh, things are really nice down here in general. You know, the tourists are beginning to come back because of um, the state of the, uh, they have this tier system here where according to um, how many cases there are of infection, and um, how many vaccines and all, some kind of strange balance thing. But uh, you can't progress into more openness until the statistics reach a certain point, mm -hmm. which they have here. So they're letting more, more tourists come back in and businesses are, are open, yeah. So that's interesting. It's a kind of double-edged sword, you know? It's, it's, it's good in some ways, it's really needed for the business, but it has an impact on the local community that isn't always so positive. You know, yeah. and people are trying to balance that out and stuff. So. Yes, yes, and and what about um, yourself? Like performing, like is it's getting closer to do live performances, and it's it's closer to, to do live performances, but it's it's not close to doing live performances at full capacity. Now I know it's different every day. I tend to watch the news from all over the world. I, I want to know how it's doing in, you know, not just the mainland or on, on, <clears throat> in the States and Hawaiian islands, but everywhere. And I see how, you know, in Tokyo, for instance, in a normal sort of pre-pandemic thing, um, everywhere in Europe would have been a, a potential uh, market for you to, to do a concert tour, right? To promote whatever project you were doing on whatever scale. It doesn't have to be with a big superstar, but, Here's the thing, um, Tokyo is now in a sort of fourth wave and they're debating whether to even continue with the Olympics. So there's not gonna be anybody filling like the Budokan theater in Tokyo or even the smaller jazz clubs or anywhere. So you can't even, you can't organize work in these regions until we get past a certain state of this pandemic, which we are absolutely not. Italy, the same thing. You know, Italy has really, really been hit hard in, in different regions. And and yes, they're opening up restaurants again and movie theaters and all that to some degree of capacity. Um, but it's not it's not the same as as um, and the, the sad thing about it's not the same. It's not just it doesn't feel as comfortable. You can't economically make that work. You can't have a concert promoter go too far with a 33 percent capacity of a building that holds like 10,000 people. You know what I mean? It just, you can do something, but it's going to be pretty, you know, it's going to be awkward. And, and, and I think uh, over too much time, probably unsustainable, you know, but I don't know. This is where we're at now. There's a song on your album and congratulations again, Treehouse. Mm, and, tree house, yeah. and you hear the, the birds and it's just wonderful. It, it's just, I can relate to it. And it's just, I think a lot of people can. So can you tell us about, about the song Treehouse? Yeah, the, well, that song, The Treehouse, was originally going to be the, 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 uh, the title, the main song of the album. And it was going to mm -hmm. be, The, the Treehouse was going to be the name of the album. And I wrote it, it's kind of like a, a, an homage to the house itself. We had this gorgeous place. Uh, on one of the highest points in Woodstock, overlooking the Hudson Valley, it's a great view. And um, we had a lot of, we had five acres. And the way the house was, was uh, landscaped, it was really set amongst the trees. So it was like house, certain trees were left up and we had gardens surrounding it. And what happened was the level of the house, the, the elevation was something like 
2,400, 2,300 feet or something. It was really up in the air so that the house itself, when you were in the living room, the trees that you saw outside around the house were on the same level of where the birds lived. Oh. Yeah, so when you, yeah, it was amazing. You had this really gorgeous close contact with them. And uh, the sound of that, that's like the ambiance of what it was like to live there. You heard bird song like every day, you know, from about like, you know, 10 minutes before five in the morning. I, I clocked it one time and um, it was beautiful. But that's, I was trying to create the ambience of, of, uh, of that place, of that house. Yeah. yeah, so that was going to be the title of your album, but it's I know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and then yeah, things changed. <laughs> um, Donald Trump won the election. And I, I had a, a whole lot of other uh, sort of half finished ideas. And I thought, you know, I, I, I want to completely finish all these things and put it in one package. And those other things, uh, the, the society and the election, election related ideas were um, the ones that I felt I really had to finish because I wanted it, I wanted them all to be together, the, the, the socially conscious, um, uh, vocal songs and the other instrumentals. It was important that they live together, but I didn't want them to be sort of scattered amongst each other. I felt it would be more unfocused because people's attention spans these days are, are quite different. You know, people are, people are, are used to, you know, I'll have one of this and maybe two of those from like, you know, eight songs down or something, you know, and I'm just really old fashioned like that. I think when you read a book, you want to read it from the beginning to the end and you don't want to skip a chapter if you want to get the whole story, you know? And I mean, music is like that to me as well. Or the way that certain artists want to present music like, like I do, I'm, I'm really not just like scattershot. Here's a bunch of songs, what do you think? You know, it's really, you know, I want to, I want to, create some kind of a thread through the presentation of it, you know, that you, that people can sort of get what they get out of it. But it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely something being told. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have eyes wide open, middle of the night and the urban Psalm three, which mm -hmm. I really, I, I've watched it and it's, it's beautiful. It's filmed in Hawaii, right? Yes. 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 That's in my town. I live in the town of Kapa'a. And uh, my brother and I went down uh, to the main street at about like six o'clock in the morning when there was no traffic. And, you know, we tried a few locations and that, that really worked out well. I was really happy with that. Yes, and it's, it's, a, so it's a prayer song, but was this written in 1991? This was um, written after the Rodney King uh, incident. It was written after that, yeah. And, and it actually, a long, long time ago, I, I included it in a, a demo of like, uh, I think three other songs where I was attempting to get a, a record deal support for another project. And I actually shopped it with these other songs. Now, when I think about it now, it's like, it was sort of too hip for the room. I can say like, because it didn't actually sound like it sounds now. There weren't, um, the early versions of Urban Song Number no. 3 did not have the, um, the uh, news montage in the beginning that wasn't there. It didn't have the, uh, the chanting from the college kids. Uh, it did not have Dr. King's voice in there. It also did not have that whole organ section where it goes, uh, that's what I pray, that's the way I pray. And the whole thing. So it's, it's quite a, a more better version of the song now, which I'm really happy with. But um, I got compliments on it. I did not get a deal for that music and then, I, things carried on, work carried on. And, and like I said, I always knew that was gonna find the right place at some point. It was just me sitting myself down and really focusing on it and finishing it off till I'm truly happy with it, um, which I did. That was one of the last things to get done on the record. I stopped recording in November of 2019. And uh, those parts on uh, Urban Psalm number three and the guitar parts on "If" were the last uh, last things to mm. last record. Yeah, and you know, so Michael Bland worked on "Urban Song 3. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
So that is amazing. And then you have the song, as you said, if. If isn't about if something, if you were reincarnation, like, uh, is that right? That's one question. It's, it's a series of conceptual <clears throat> not conceptual impossibilities, maybe. But the whole posing the question is, is what it is. So what is it goes, uh, um, if you come back again, yes, that is about reincarnation. If you could choose the color of your skin, a conceptual impossibility. But what if you could? What would you do? The question itself is, is the, not a joke, but it's the impetus. And uh, if the sun fell from the sky, wow, well, what's going to, you know, will that ever really, you know what I mean? No, you know, if you see the sun fall from the sky, it would be the end of everything as we, as we know it. But what if you did? What if that happened to you? Um, what was it, the other one? If you come back again, if you could choose the color of your skin. Oh, uh, uh, this is just poetic. If the tears won't leave your eyes. That's just a poetic way to say if you're so moved by something that you can't stop crying about it. And, and your music, I found it's very thought provoking, it's timely, it's political co uh, commentary, it has sound bites, news bites. And it's, it's something like you have such an important message and it's, um, you know, it's wonderful. And is that correct? That is, it has um, a message for everyone, but I find it's very thought, you know, it's-, it's I, I think so. Thank you for saying that. That is, that is the intention. I mean, cause I do, you know, when you're, when you're putting lyrics together and when you're putting music together, I, I do want to provoke some thought. I want to share emotion. I want to share my feeling. And I, I definitely want to provoke your thought by using words like that, you know, by posing. And I'd never written a song like that before, you know? And again, I said that on the liner notes, I, this album for me, I had so much fun doing it because I did all these, quite a few things that I had never quite done before. Well, the middle of the night is, is a mm. wonderful, they're, they're all great. But yeah. tell us a, about, was that, you know, yeah. during a time where, you know, it was a difficult time for you, like if, mm -hmm. if I may ask. Mm -hmm. There's that adage that says, um, write about what you know, okay? And that was an example of, I was going through a very challenging financial time and I couldn't figure out exactly how it was gonna um, pan out. And it's really, um, I, the, night, <laughs> the night before the morning that I wrote the song, that was, there's, a, there's a, a, a shot in the video where I'm sitting on the edge of the bed and I'm just like talking to myself. I've got my head in my hands. I'm just talking to myself, trying to figure it out. And that really happened the very night before I wrote the song, except I didn't, I just sort of sat up on one arm in bed. You know, how you're, you're not really getting out of bed, but you're just sort of like, yes. yeah, thought, yeah. And I just had that thought of like, what the hell? And it was just a real feeling. I woke up and carried on to my day. And then uh, I came back in the afternoon. I used to have lunch by myself in Woodstock a lot. I used to get the, get the New York Times, go to my favorite uh, little restaurant and, and have, uh, have lunch. And then I'd come back and I'd work in the studio for a while. So I did that. But when I came back in the studio this time, I turned on the synthesizer. And I just, I, f I was looking for an interesting sort of rhythm sound. I wanted it to be kind of like a, a subtle hip hop groove, kind of dark, which I found. And then I just started playing some chords. I started the loop and it's, this, it's half of the same loop what you hear on the record. And when I started playing the chords, the thing just spilled out, the chord changes and those lyrics that they, I, I was just improvising it. It came out, oh, oh, what was we, such a strange society. I think I improvised like about maybe two verses and about two thirds of what I improvised in, and I had the machine in record, you know, are what ended up being used in the record. There's from a uh, flip it. That's another one mm -hmm. I like. <laughs> and yes. And then you have December and then war in heaven. Mm -hmm. um, was can you tell us about well any all three if you want but the um, the flip it yeah um well flip it was written 
It was written maybe, I think, I want to say maybe 2018, 2017. I say 2018, I think, somewhere in there. And I wrote it. I was home from the road. I don't remember which tour I was, you know, coming home from, but uh, I had some time and uh, I just started writing. I remember it was summertime. And I took a break from the studio and I went to just go into town to do an errand to pick up something from the hardware store. I don't even remember. And the song came to me as I was driving the car down the mountain into town. Cause I thought, and it was like a thought, it came to me as, what if, what if um, <laughs> the rhythm of the song went, there was one accent and then two accents and then three and four, the whole thing is like, dun, 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 dun. And then I thought, oh, that's kind of funny. It could be nice. And then I kind of heard, what if it was a, it's called like a um, diminished chord uh, with the dominant seven, right? But then I thought, well, what if it turns around and does the same thing, but goes ascending? So that it's just like you hear it. I thought, oh, it would be funny if it went all the way down. And then, well, how are we going to continue? What if it went back up in the other direction with a different chord? And that's that's really what it is. And then the middle came. That stuff sometimes, that's one of those ones that just really wrote itself. And uh, Adriano Molinari, um, uh, I flew him over uh, again in one of those periods. Uh, when I was home and, and had the time to record. And he just played so beautifully on it. He's an incredible drummer, he's one of the best drummers anywhere. He lives in Italy and uh, he works a lot with uh, Zuccaro. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, which is how I met him. And um, yeah, but that just worked out great. He just played so fantastically on it. Um, uh, War in Heaven, uh, yeah. oh, December. December was another literal thing. You know, when you're when you tour like that and some, when you're touring, you're going for months at a time, weeks and weeks, sometimes a six week stretch, sometimes a couple of months. And then they'll give you a week home, 10 days home and you go back out. Well, when you're not on that kind of schedule, sometimes you could be home for as long you might. And you, you have more than enough money to live and take care of yourself. But you might be home for like, I don't know, a month and a half, two months. Mm -hmm. And December happened to be like, OK. Uh, I didn't have any work that in, required me to leave home, had more than enough money, but it was December. And it's not my favorite time of year to be in, in upstate New York and that, on the East Coast at all. So I'm just hanging out at home and I'm, I started writing and I, it just came out. I looked out the window and it was like a, just snow everywhere. Snow and one of the things where you could, it could snow like, you know, uh, two feet of snow and like, six inches in Woodstock in the summertime. It was just terrible. <laughs> so I just, I just thought the, um, you know, the, the feel of it, you know, the kind of, the, cold, the a kind of stark cold, but beautiful. Cause it's beautiful. What's nice about um, the snow and, and places like that. It is visually gorgeous after a fresh snow in that time of year, the way it looks on everything. It's, it's beautiful. It's stark. You don't want to be out in it, but it has its own kind of beauty, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, the, the song is like that. It's very kind of stark, but then the melody comes in and it all sort of, you know, goes somewhere. Yeah. That's wonderful. You know, David, what would you like people to take away from your music? Mm. Mm. Well, well, they stopped me in my tracks with that. And, and I think it's not so much that what I want for people to take away. I can't really want much for another person. You know, I, I want less and less for myself all the time, but I, what I want for them to, I, what I want for them is just to really experience it uh, deeply as a feeling Firstly, I guess, because that's where it gets you first. If, when you hear it, you feel it. I would just like for everyone to experience it deeply, uh, as deeply as they can, as a feeling, and enjoy whatever positive energy you get from that, whether it's the physical sensation of the music itself or whether it's the intellectual stimulus of uh, some words you heard or an idea that you might really resonate with you. Because different people dig different things. So, um, 
No, I basically more than anything, I just I want people to experience it, and then the experience is is uh, is their own. Understand. April twenty sixth, your uh, your record went vinyl. Yes. 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 So right. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, and I want to tell you too. Tell everyone about. Uh, what I'm doing now in, in Kauai, the people at KKCR, Kauai Community Radio, have given me a, a radio program uh, every other Monday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, on KKCR. It's 91 point, who's my number? It's 91.9 and 99.1. Uh, and they have a website. If you go uh, kkcr.org. They have a great website and it explains everything and there's a lot of information. But I've been really enjoying that, you know. Oh, moment. great. Um, it's not playing it, anywhere, but it's, it's been fun. They can go um, for the records. If you want to get the vinyl, you can go to yeah. bandcamp.com, I believe, and go to uh, headstrongmedia.com. Uh, my website will have information, davidsanchez.com. There's a YouTube channel now. Uh, for me that we'll have stuff up there. We'll have um, interviews and different things and like kind of what, what we're doing and, uh, and information about, uh, about the show and, and any, any concerts that will come up magically. One more question. Are you, are you going to be doing like uh, activities like, uh, like walking, running or water sports or? <laughs> Well, I, my wife and I have discovered snorkeling since we've moved here. We've been here a year and a half now. And so right. we snorkel as much as we can. Uh, we was like the last four days in a row we were on the beach. So that's great. Um, we were cycling a lot more last summer. I think I'll probably get back into that. And uh, tennis. Uh, oh. That'll be, that'll be good. Yeah. Good. And you're... Trigger finger, is it better now? Like I remember Trigger we talked finger, about I, I had, No, thanks for asking. I had the operation finally in October of last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just couldn't bear it anymore. It was ridiculously painful. Mm -hmm. I had the operation, operation went completely successful. And uh, I did a bunch of rehab, about six or eight weeks of rehab. And it seems to be just about 100% again. I'll give it a 98.5, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye for now, David. Thank you, Christine. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Hey.